Shabbat Shalom. This morning's a call to worship is based on Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let the people now say, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, the life's storms have raged. We would not have made it. Getting out of bed in the morning. Because God is with us. Facing the challenges of the day. Because God is with us. Putting a smile on us. Steadying ourselves for conflict. Because God is with us. Let the people now say, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let us worship the living God. And let us stand in body or in spirit and sing, Gather Us In, which is number eight in the green hymnal. Others. And all you have to do is think the time 
when someone's been a stumbling block to you, maybe um, just completely out of sync with you saying something that at best is discouraging and worst is tempting. And even Peter, our great example of a stumbling block, had to be called out by Jesus. And so we just have to rest in the good company that we're in. And we can confess it. We can name it and confess it. We have nothing to fear from our God who already knows what we've done. And so let's come together as his people with confidence and confess. Gracious God, we regret any and every time we have been a stumbling block to another person's faith. Lord, forgive us. Convict us of our sin so that we might not do it again. And Lord, in your mercy, send others to those people to show them the blessings of faith. May your will be the last word, not our ignorance. We know from the scripture that you can use our mistakes in the lives of others to your glory. That is our hope. Cover all that we say and do with your grace. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, my friends, arm in arm with Peter, having been chastened by our Lord, we receive his amazing grace, his embrace, and the breath that imparts the gift of the Holy Spirit. My friends, we are all forgiven in Jesus Christ our Lord. So let's rise and sing um, out of joy. And then after that, we're going to pass the peace that we have in our hearts to one another in some acceptable fashion. <laughs> We will now recite the uh, prayer for illumination in unison. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. The uh, first scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 19, verses 7 to 14. We will read this in unison. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much more pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, and keeping them there is great reward. 
but who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and his meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. That was two different versions. <laughs> um, and and it's, it's a, I got an, an email from Allison saying, the one that you printed out was right and one that I copied was wrong, but it, both of them are in, the, in what Morgan and I were, were looking at. And so I just sat back and listened to see what you would all do. And so I think you heard the NIV and what was up there was the NRS. So now we're going to read from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 38 to 50. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him. Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame, <laughs> enter life maimed, than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. And I think I just read the NIV instead of the NRS. <laughs> Have mercy on me, O Lord, to send according to this, but that is mercy. Amen. All right. <laughs> oh, let's pray. Gracious God, we just said it together in from Psalm 19. Um, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So we worship a God of grace, thank God. And then we read this passage of doing something we know that we're all capable of doing and hearing the dire consequences, and it makes you swallow hard. So let's start there and work back. The consequences of being a stumbling block to someone else's faith are dire, going to Gehenna. And that's how that's the, that's a word in, in Greek that is translated as hell. It's actually Gehenna is a place, it's a garbage dump outside of Jerusalem where they would burn all the trash. If we let this passage of scripture stand on its own, and then it's like that feeling, right? Just wait till your father gets home because you're in trouble, right? But if we put this passage of scripture into the larger context of scripture and what we know of Jesus, that Jesus would pray, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do and for God so love the world that Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, then we realize that Jesus just wants us to take very seriously the act of being a stumbling block to someone else's faith and how we act as doorkeepers of the faith. This is no small thing. This passage or something similar to it is, is also in Luke. I like the Luke version better because it starts with, hey, we can all do this. We can all be stumbling blocks to one another. So therefore, we need to call each other out on it, which is a whole other sermon how to do that. 
And then finally, but we have to forgive one another again and again and again and again. But in this version of Mark, he ends his pep talk, not with condemnation, but with the, what the end game is to be at peace with one another. I'm saying these things so that you can be at peace with one another. So now let's go back to the beginning. Jesus is still holding a baby from last week, right? And you know, how, how are we going to, how are we supposed to, and the, the, the disciples have been arguing about who was the greatest. And so you need to you know, serve the least of these. That's how, right? And then John, God bless him, said, hey, Jesus, we just saw somebody healing in your name. And we told them to stop because they're not following us. And with, with, you know, because I'm from Long Island and I can be a little snarky, you know, I can, I can imagine Jesus going, all right, everybody, let's, let's just take what John said. What's wrong with that sentence? Where should we start? Us? Because they're not following us? I, I think, you know, we're following Jesus. Not you, not us, Jesus. And then Jesus says, do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Right? Wow, there's power in Jesus' name. And whoever is not against us is for us, which is different than what we usually hear. And that's also in scripture. But in this instance, whoever is not against us is for us. Challenging John and the disciples to draw the circle wider. First, they're vying for a position about who's the greatest. Now they're trying to close ranks around Jesus. Only we understand Jesus. The early church and the, the community to which Mark is writing, they used to fight about who's truly the followers of Jesus, who got it right, who has the, 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 the pure gospel whose teachings are truest to him. Do we do that? How do we explain all our different denominations? Here's a joke. And, and but I, and it was amazing to me how easy this joke was to find. I just, I Googled Baptist joke. <laughs> and this was the first one that came up. And it, uh, this joke was by Emo Phillips. And part of this article is like, he, he wants credit for it. So Emo, you get your credit. And he tells the story. Once I saw this guy on the bridge about to jump, and I said, don't do it. He said, nobody loves me. And I said, God loves you. Do you believe in God? He said, yes. And I said, are you a Christian or a Jew? He said, a Christian. I said, me too. Protestant or Catholic? He said, Protestant. I said, me too. What franchise? <laughs> he said, Baptist. I said, me too. Northern Baptist or Southern Baptist? <laughs> He said, Northern Baptist. I said, me too. Northern Baptist conservative or Northern Baptist liberal or, or, or Northern liberal Baptist. He said, Northern conservative Baptist. Me too. Northern conservative Baptist Great Lake region or Northern conservative Baptist Eastern region. He said, Northern conservative Baptist Great Lakes region. I said, me too. Northern Conservative Baptist Great Lakes Region Council of 1879 or Northern Conservative Baptist Great Lakes Region Council of 1912? He said, Northern Conservative Baptist Great Lakes Region Council of 1912. And I said, die, heretic, and I pushed him off. Yeah. How do we interact with one another? Do we ask ourselves, are they for Jesus? There are plenty of Christians who think that their brand or flavor of their franchise of Christianity is the only brand flavor franchise of Christianity. Years ago, I uh, met, a, met a Baptist, not to, not, not to bash Baptists, or, uh, but we were looking for a place. I've been very hilly part of New Jersey and was looking for a place to for my kids to learn to practice riding their bikes. And Baptist Church just happens to have a nice flat parking lot, and there's nobody there. So we pulled in, pulled out the bikes, and 
didn't realize that there was a manse behind the church and out comes the pastor with tracks to, to tell us about Jesus. And, um, and my husband and I'm just, and I'm like willing him in my head, don't say it, don't say it. And he goes, oh, oh, no, we're Christians. Sorry, my, my wife is a pastor. And I just knew. And he looked at me and he said, are you saved? I didn't say a word. And, and, Car- and my husband looked at me and he's just like, you could just tell him, oh, oh, yeah, sure, sure absolutely. You know, da, 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 da. And then the pastor went away and he goes, do you want to leave? I'm like, yes. <laughs> And I was just, and he's like, are you angry? I'm like, who asks a pastor whether they're saved? Right? we got, we got some work to do, right? And I, I told that story like three or four times over the years. This was a long time ago. And I'm pretty sure that that Sunday, because uh, I talked about it in worship the Sunday afterwards, and I'm darn sure he had to as well. I asked this woman pastor whether she was saved, and she didn't say anything. Right, and I and I just thought, oh, yep, we both <clears throat> we got a lot of work to do. Do you have a litmus test for who are the real followers of Jesus? What are the essential tenets? And keeping it real, how many times have you said to yourself in the last several years, "I don't know how you call yourself a Christian," and fill in the blank and vote for so-and-so or how do you be pro this or anti this and this that's where the rubber meets the road what are the essential tenants what are we you know what what needs to profess or is it through actions remember jesus says whoever is not against us is for us and then he he expands the circle even more Whoever offers a drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose their reward. Which makes me think of Matthew 25. You know, when the separation of the sheep and the goats and um, uh, the question of you know, when you gave drink to the thirsty, food to the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick, or visit those in prison, took care of those who are sick, you did it for me. And they could, when, when more did we do it? You, you know, and Jesus says, when you, when you do these things, you, you're doing it for me. I did a funeral years ago where there was, there was no one to talk to about this person. I didn't know about their faith. The funeral director just told me that, that she was a nurse. And the only uh, folks were there for the funeral, but that, there was nobody to give me. The, her, the, the person that she was closest to was her caregiver at the end of life. And I, you know, I prayed on it, and what I came to is that Matthew 25 passage saying, I didn't know her, but I know that Jesus did. Because she made a lifetime of caring for the sick and bringing food to the hungry and, and giving drink to the thirsty. So back to this idea of stumbling blocks. Let's all of us just stop worrying so much about who's in and who's out. It's not our job. Who's helping people? Who's offering water to people regardless of faith or creed or anything? Be at peace with one another is where we finish this passage. Be at peace. Who are our people? The ones seeking to bring healing into the world. The ones seeking to bring peace. And we're not always going to do this well. We will be stumbling blocks to other folks. And when the Holy Spirit convicts us of that, you know, of our arrogance and our stinginess with the love of God, it can feel like a millstone around our necks because God forbid, God forbid we should turn anybody off from, from being a follower of Jesus Christ. So Lord, and we prayed it before, but Lord, forgive us. And then, you know, send people to undo, undo it because you do that. <laughs> Thank you. And in the meantime, you know, we're not going to worry so much about who's in and who's out and who's first and who's last. We're just going to get busy offering cups of water to the thirsty and being encouraged by all the good folks in the world 
who share, and this, and this is the challenging piece, but Jesus says this, being encouraged by all the good folks in the world who share the heart of Christ, whether they know it or not. Amen. You are invited to stand in body or in spirit as we sing, love divine, all loves excelling. Thank you. 
nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. So for this morning's offering, in addition to uh, our financial offerings, which again, you can give um, for those who are here by giving to one of the deacons when you leave worship uh, or folks at home or during the week online, either through going to the church website or by setting it up through your, your bank. But also there's a food offering benefiting the church on the green in Bloomfield will be collected today. Uh, the, the, please indicate on your checks food offering in the memo section, um, and if you're, and also if you're giving online. And we are only collecting monetary donations at this time. And remembering the words of our Savior, who said, "It is more blessed to give than it is to receive." And we are now going to receive another musical offering. May it be a boon to our souls.
to those who are in need. May these gifts help unburden those who are carrying the heaviest of loads. 
We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I think sitting there and being blessed with music like that is um, kind of illustrates for me when we say that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And there's something, I feel like something's being pulled out of me. And when we, when we hear music like that, I don't even really understand it. But it's marvelous and mysterious. There's so many different ways to pray. And I remember there was a, there's been a season or on and off in, in this community, we sometimes make a, a space so that you can say a name that's on your heart. I have a name I want to speak out today. And so at a certain point in this prayer time, I'm just going to bid you to speak aloud. And you can speak in your heart, but if you want to put a name out there so you hear it and we hear it together, feel free to do that. And so let's, let's harness these activated spirits and in, in our our softened up humble hearts and come into prayer before our God. God, you are a God of covenant, a covenant that you keep. And we thank you for that. And your word tells us that we don't live by bread alone. We're not just physical beings, but we, we live by every word that has come out of your mouth. And your word comes to us in so many forms. So along with the psalmist today, we praise you for your, your precepts, your laws, your decrees, your commandments. All of these you've, you've spoken out for us to do for creation's well-being, of which we are a part. And so we thank you that you have made it clear to us how we are to be as your people. And we know that you do expect that we will see what you're doing on our behalf and that we'll be grateful to you. And so we offer you our gratitude today. We offer you gratitude for the gift of music and the harmony that's created that speaks to us deeply in our spirits. We thank you that we can even be here to, together in this sanctuary when many, many are not gathering. We thank you for um, very specific things like the, that this sanctuary was full yesterday honoring Evelyn Rappel, her life of prayer, her, um, her family, the legacy you've given to her family through her life and to us. So we thank you for her. And we thank you for things like um, Nancy Bloom's, um, Nancy, the Bloom's daughter is, is getting better. And we continue to pray that you will keep um, healing her. And we have um, thanks in our hearts that we want to just offer to you. Just for the places we can see you doing things we could never do, but we um, we're grateful. Even the tiniest improvements and healings and goodnesses. Thank you, God of Covenant, for simplifying all these gazillion laws and decrees into the very simplest form that we are to love you and love our neighbor as ourselves. You have done it down for us so well. And I thank you for that. And so we thank you that you call us to the simplicity of obedience to that great commandment. And so today we offer ourselves to you. We love you. We, we, we want to do your will and to follow your way. Help us. Help us as individuals. Help us as your community of faith gathered in this place. Help your people. And we, we want to love our neighbors so badly. At least we say it. But and when it hits the ground, it's hard. And so, Lord, we just offer ourselves to you again, asking that you would help us love our neighbors. And we, we ask that you would help us love our nearby neighbors, the ones whose names we know. And we come alongside many of our own neighborhood, our family here, to pray with them things um, 
that they've asked. And so we, we offer again to you, Dorothy and Ken and Mercedes and Gail. We offer to you, Stefan, for healing and a job opportunity. We offer you Liz for discernment as she seeks uh, a new job. We offer to you Norma's Uncle James, uh, his family, particularly Tom and Beverly. We ask for you to comfort them and also Carmela's family. We remember them to you, Lord, who knows their needs. We ask for healing for Jackie, a correct diagnosis for Paul, favor for Will and Anna so that they can come this way and comfort and peace for Yvonne's mom. And Lord, we do have names on our hearts. And so in this special time and place, we speak them aloud in our hearts to you. God of covenant, we, we offer to you our wider community, the distress, the horror around us that we see, um, the horror of wildfires and recovery from Ida and recovery from COVID. In a particular, we, we um, ask for you, the God of the universe, to watch over the people at our border who are trying to come in and be our neighbors, and particularly this group of Haitians who've traveled so far. Make a way, make provision for them, Father, and help us to be generous in accepting people who come into our midst. We also ask for you to pour out grace and, and security and peace on our kids, our teachers, and the parents in, in a new school year, all of us, as we live with great uncertainty. And then, Father, we ask that you would help us love ourselves, because that is part of your great trinity of love. And we must stay in balance with it. So help us love ourselves. Help us forgive ourselves. Help us to grow and to be transformed in a way that pleases you. And then use us, even in our imperfect but willing, um, in the willingness of our hearts, use us. We ask, Father, that not only would we not be stumbling blocks to others, and if we have been, that we could recover from that and, and, and confess it and maybe even fix it, but also that we'd be a little saltier, the kind of salt you're looking for in this world, and a little more light-filled. We ask that somehow we look more like you want us to look like and be like. We ask, Father, that we be a little less judgy of people who don't follow us or don't worship like us or when they don't worship when we do. And I, I ask that somehow you give us a discernment through your spirit that we could see the fruit of other people's lives that maybe don't look exactly like we do and see that they are not against us and therefore they are with us. Help us to throw away all the limits tests that we have. And then... Help us to just treat others the way we want to be treated. Thanks for that simplicity. And help us to not only be cup bearers of the living water of Jesus Christ, but that we would reflect somehow your amazing grace to all that we come into contact with, including each other, so that we can be called out of all our little enclaves into this great, beloved community that you are building out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation filled with the children who bear your image. And so we thank you for that call, that challenging call. And so just like Peter, the stumbling block, and those other 11 stumbling blocks, we pray the same prayer, meeting the same things. And so we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for men. And so to cap off a wonderful day of worship, we are going to now stand and sing about God's amazing grace. who are indeed being, love that imagery, cupbearers for the world. Let us go with peace in our hearts and just generous, generous love. Because gosh, the world needs it. Let us go knowing that the God who knit us together in our mother's wombs would die for us and did in the person of Jesus Christ, but rose again and is with us in power and spirit this day and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen.